Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for joining me here today. I'll be sharing on the topic of how to make the most of GitHub to set up your projects for success. So hopefully you're in the right place for that. To start off, uh, my name is Jesse Houghton, and I'm a product manager on the version control team in Visual Studio. My passion is to empower developers to focus more on their code and worry less about anything else. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the tracking and testing and deployment and backing up your code and collaboration aspects are any less important. I'm just trying to arm you with the right tools so that you can feel like masters at those aspects and you can be as productive as possible by focusing on that code. So my entire job as a product manager is to listen to developers like you all so I can take your feedback and your wants and your needs and your desires and bring all of those back to my engineering team to make you more successful. So please engage with me today and I promise that if I can't answer your question, I'll follow up with you afterwards and connect you to somebody who can. As a reminder, it's a 75 minute session. I'll be reserving that last 15 minutes to answer any of your questions and share out all the resources from my presentation. Feel free to keep it conversational. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have during the presentation as well, so don't feel like you have to wait till the very end. And I'll be covering the GitHub developer workflow from project management with GitHub issues, showing you a bunch of inner loop GitHub integrations and Git tooling tips in the IDE, which is personally my favorite part and finishing off with a look at GitHub Actions for your build pipelines. This is all with the goal of showing you the power and scope of integrating GitHub with your solutions. And this is VS Live, so I'll be trying to stay in Visual Studio as much as possible for the demos. Uh, but I will be showing quite a bit in GitHub so we can set some context and background as we go along and set up things that are going to sh show up in the IDE later. All righty. So we can get into it. You're all probably familiar with ticket tracking systems, whether you've worked with Jira or Asana or Azure DevOps or other internal solutions in the past. They're all pretty similar to a degree, so I'll try and highlight today what I see as the biggest differences that GitHub has in comparison. Their solution is called GitHub Issues, and the reason is pretty self-explanatory. The issues are going to be that basic primitive unit that you're using to track things across your project boards, where you can update your status on different work that you're doing. It's also going to be um, kind of that basic unit along with the pull request that you're using to keep track of everything as you go. I find them to be very lightweight and super flexible. Um, so you're not bogged down by any like requirement, requirements on certain settings that you might have to set up in other systems. And that's where I feel like they kind of stand apart or have a little bit um, of a different take on the project management aspect of the work. I'm curious, though, um, of all you all joining me today, is anybody already using issues in their development? OK, awesome. <laughs> cool. What do, you, what do you think of them? I got three hands over here. I got some thumbs up. Yeah. Transition things over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so glad that you brought up the customization aspect. You were mentioning that there are really flexible views in the project boards, and that's something that I will talk about later in the presentation, so get a little preview there. Um, does anybody who raised their hand work on an open source repo and would mind me like poking around in the repo as a demonstration item? That's totally fine. I have some samples ready to go, um, and we can go take a look at them now. Uh, I figured that it would make sense to kind of set the stage to actually see how these are being used uh, in the real world before hopping in to show you how to do it on your side. So I just want to make sure everybody can see the Vue.js repo. Okay, yeah, we're on GitHub now. I'm in Vue.js. If you don't know, it's a open source JavaScript library that helps you build really cool, beautiful, and rich data visualizations. And 
on their issue page, which you can get to by navigating to the issue tab here. I'm going to kind of scroll down and show what the issues look like in their raw format. So this is just a basic list of the issues. You can sort it in whatever order. And you can see by the names of some of these issues that they range from being suggestions from contributors on the repo. So this person is saying, hey, maybe we can consider enabling discussions on the repo. Uh, as a side note, discussions aren't covered in this presentation, but they're a good way to have longer format conversations on GitHub. Uh, they also range to have bug reports and feature suggestions. So you might notice that someone is reporting that NPM run build fails on compiling to NPM package for a specific version of view. So this is a super common use case for GitHub issues is to have community engagement. You can even see if I scroll up, they have this special welcome banner that if you're a contributor to the open source, you've got these special instructions to get you started if you're going to start working on it. And for those of you with private repos, which it sounds like a lot of you have, um, what I've seen a lot of organizations do is create a public repo that has like a similar name to their private one. And that's where they can house these kind of like public discussions. Maybe they have some parts of their work that is open source. And so you can start getting that community engagement and that community feedback in a really easy place. And I mentioned projects, but you can actually have projects that cover multiple repos at once that span things that are public and private. And so you can bring those issues and those, those community contributions into the same space as where you're actually tracking your own work. Um, and that's just like a really cool boost, boost for community engagement and transparency to get that feedback. So let's go ahead and break down the anatomy of an issue. And I have one in mind here, so I'll go ahead and search that up. And before I even click on this issue, you can kind of see that the color here is purple. There's a check mark that denotes a closed issue. You can see the last person who closed it and quickly get to their GitHub account on the web. You can also see that there, it's been tagged as a regression. So this is probably some kind of bug that they found. And milestones here is denoting how many code changes or pull requests that actually went into kind of solving this issue. So they've got all of the items that you would expect to have in another project management system. Um, and I find it to be like super easy to see these things like at a glance. So as I clicked on it, I mentioned those code changes. We get the fixed by up here, and these are quick links to those pull requests that I mentioned before that contributed to, to making updates on this issue. I am. Um, noticing as well that it is on the maintenance project board, and we'll take a look at that later. And I can tell that they're leveraging a template here. So a lot of other systems might have an admin or some manager on the team have to set up these custom kind of units where it has like all these drop downs and you need to make sure that you're specifying the right version for everything. GitHub has a really lightweight solution to that, and that's just using templates to allow you to specify all of the things that you would expect to see, but you're not blocked if you maybe you don't know what the specific version or what the release time frame is on something, and you can just fill in what you have in the template, and there's a space to fill that in once you have it. Then I did want to scroll down a little bit to show kind of what the conversation and the history looks like in the ticket. One thing here you might notice is that this item was added to to do in the maintenance board via an automation. So you still have that same powerful ability to set up these automations that are performing actions and updating your issues on the on the back end without you having to do all the manual work of updating them on your own. And I'll show an example of that as well. And then I'm also going to scroll down to some of these actions that are performed by bots. Um, the one I want to point out is going to be Dependabot, and that's a really cool uh, integration that you can set up with GitHub to keep track of your dependencies, and it'll alert you if you have any um, security vulnerabilities in dependencies that you haven't updated. So that was what I wanted to cover on this ticket, and I have another example over in Free Code Camp. Free Code Camp is a organization that's dedicated to helping folks learn how to code and scale up in different areas. They cover like a lot of different topics um, across a lot of different languages. 
And they have all of their curriculum and all of their resources on GitHub as well. So let's go ahead and hop into a specific issue from them. And we can see in the UI components library issue right here that instead of being something that's like tracking a bug or a specific item, this UI components library ticket is actually kind of a, uh, it's a higher level view of the work that needs to be done for this library. So they're taking advantage of one of the new features in GitHub issues, which is this task list. It's the really awesome customizable, like quickly lightweight move around way to organize issues together. So you still have that organization um, that you might get from other project management systems. And it's built right into that description window. So you don't have to click around to another tab to see like what are all the linked items to this. You can quickly see the status. And one thing that I really like about the to-do to list is kind of small, but I think it's nice to be able to see out of how many tasks a certain task is. And um, we'll see when I'm creating a, a to-do list later how you can quickly make some items and then just in like a few clicks turn each of those items into their own issues so I don't have to go out, create a whole new issue, make sure that it's linked to this one. We've just like made those quick, um, those things that you're doing over and over in your flow as quick and easy as possible. So other things to point out here, they're using custom labels. So our volunteer mentioned that there are a lot of opportunities for customization and one of those is making labels that fit um, the way that your team works the best. And those are just gonna be another way to filter and find exactly what you're looking for uh, as quickly as possible. Let me get back to my slides here. And I just wanna make sure I covered everything I wanted to mention on that item before I move on. Cool. So we've seen that you can do a lot with issues. You can track your work, you can do that community management. And one of the other things about that community management that I didn't mention is that you can set up those templates for those as well. And let me pop back over to Vue.js because I like what they're doing when you create a new issue. Instead of allowing you to just have that open area to type in and like maybe write something that you don't necessarily want in your public repo, you can set up these links and they actually have it linking out to their own bug reporting or feature request form. And the thing that's cool about this is that they've got all of their different tables. They can even set those items that they might want if they want more control about how the community is interacting with them. And then this gets converted back into a GitHub issue that they can uh, track and move around on GitHub as well. Just wanted to make sure I didn't miss that. Um, and then you've got that same efficient communication. You can at mention your other collaborators and you can make sure that you're staying up to date by subscribing to particular issues. If you've commented on them, it'll, it'll all have you, um, it'll reference you and let you know if there's anything coming up. And that's also gonna show up in your GitHub dashboard, which is kind of that, that main screen that you get whenever you log into github.com. So enough talking about what can we do and let's actually see what we can do with our own issues. So I'll pop over to my sample repo. And ShareX is an open source program that allows you to capture or record parts of your screen. It's a really great tool for getting um, those quick GIFs. So if you ever see a blog post that's like, here are all the new features, all the PMs are like just making GIFs a lot of the time so that we can share those on the blog. Um, and this is one of the tools that I've been using. Um, I've created a fork from it so I can show what, uh, show some of my example things on top of work that is, you know, out in the wild. I didn't, you know, create this from scratch. Um, and I want to hop over to my issues. I've created a whole bunch of open issues here. You can see some of them I've tagged with items. And I want to show how quick I can create a new issue by adding a title. I can add a quick description. And I would suggest 
you know, using taking advantage of those templates, you're not getting useless issues like the ones I'm creating for the purposes of demonstration. But let's go ahead and add a blank task list. And this is the editing here is in GitHub style markdown. Um, it's gonna support all of the things that you're used to in most markdown editors. Um, and you can use the items here, you can use the, uh, the, um, the icons um, that you're used to if, you, if you've just got those memorized. But when I go ahead and submit that new issue, you can see that that task list item in my markdown turned into this interactive task list element. And I wanna quickly just turn this into an issue. And it just does that as, as quickly as I can think of new tasks to do. So if I've got task one, and I've got task two, and I wanna make sure that those are getting tracked in my issue list. I can quickly convert those to issues. Um, from this page, I can go ahead and assign the people who are working on that, and I can even add that to whatever project I'm working on, and I don't have to go to that individual issue so I can update all of those fields. So just those little things that help make the flow a little bit more smooth. They've done a lot of work to allow you to create issues kind of anywhere in your workflow where something might come up, where you might need to work on something. So let's say I was thinking about the work done on here and it's related to another item that I wanted to work on. So let's say I wanted to create another task that's related here and I'll go ahead, create a new comment. And then from that three dots, I can reference this into a new issue again. So just another quick and easy way if we're having a conversation in a particular issue, and I'm saying like, oh, there's some work that we might need to do before we can get started on this, and it's going to link that and, and give me all of those connections that I might need to add manually in other tools. Last one, you're probably sick of me making issues at this point. I'll go over to my pull request tab, look for some code changes, um, and then I can go ahead and make a comment on a particular line here. And I'll just add that as a single comment in my review. And I can go ahead and reference that in a new issue as well. And that's gonna do all the linking that I need for me behind the scenes. Okay. How do issues come together to actually track all the things that you need to track? Uh, having a list of all of your issues just staring at you probably isn't the most useful thing to go scrolling around, even if I can sort and view this. And that's where, um, that's where GitHub Project comes in. So it was mentioned before, um, but GitHub Project is a great way to pr get prepared for those collaborative planning meetings, your sprint reviews, your roadmap reviews. Um, it's an awesome way to look at all of your issues in an organized way. Let me pop back over to the slides. So we have a spreadsheet view, a task board view, and a roadmap view, and that allows you to integrate your issues and pull requests all staying in GitHub um, with the idea, right, that this is where your code lives, so it makes sense that your planning can live right alongside it. As we did before, let's take a look at how those same organizations are leveraging projects today. And as Promise, I'll show the maintenance board from Vue.js. So if I go to the projects tab in GitHub, I'm actually gonna navigate to Projects Classic. This is the first iteration that GitHub did to create project boards. And you can see that it's looking like your classic Kanban board where you can drag and drop and move things around and that's gonna update the status in your items. Here, um, they're actually tracking pull requests, so that's why the icon here is a little purple one, um, to let you know that this is like a merged pull request that they're tracking here. And then I'll pop over to Freed Code Camp, and they're taking advantage of the new project boards, which have all of those cool views that I've been mentioning a few times. So you get your, your plain Excel spreadsheet type view, and this can be really great for um, searching and doing bulk actions. Maybe you need to assign a bunch of items to one person. Maybe you're sorting things around um, and giving them various priority. But I can quickly go to the Kanban version of this view 
and see everything in my status columns very easily. I'm gonna point out as well that there are some draft items here. So if I zoom in a little bit, it's probably easier to see. The draft items are in gray and they've got the dotted circle around them. And that just is another method that I can use to create notes, uh, give myself some ideas of uh, backlog items that maybe we're not ready to spec out all the way yet, but I'm not gonna lose them or forget about them because they're written here, but I don't have to commit to creating it a full issue yet. So that one is super nice. And then I'm gonna go over to the roadmap view, which I think is one of the cooler views. Um, I've seen teams like have to manually create roadmaps in other tools and it can be super annoying to move around all the separate parts. But if you've got the dates and you've got, um, as was mentioned, you can set up your iteration time periods and your sprint time periods, et cetera, um, then it'll just set up that timeline for you. So you can see everything that's in flight at, at once and I've got that same powerful filtering that I have in all of those other views to take a look at the items that are assigned to me. Or maybe I have a couple reports under me and I need to check up on what they're working on. Um, or I can search by what the actual item title is and I can see what those items are quickly and easily in all of my views. Okay. Let's recap that. You can stay up to date with your projects, especially with those, those timing items, get a bird's eye view of all the issues that are kind of ongoing and in flight. You can add metadata to your items, and this is another customizable field that allows you to splice and dice your data however you'd like to do. Um, I talked a little bit about automations, but that's gonna take care of that super annoying work of manually updating everything. Everybody loves a spreadsheet, like when it's updated the very first time, but keeping it up to date is the part that's super annoying. So that's where automations are gonna come in. And you get that awesome ability to view your projects from different perspectives. So let's get that going for our own project. I'll hop back over to my ShareX repo where I've created a sample project. I'm also seeing that it's private right now. I'll go ahead and make that public so that when you guys get all of my resources, you'll be able to poke around. But I've created some fields in my spreadsheet here. It's pretty easy to uh, add new items that, I, like I mentioned, I can create notes here, and those will be added as drafts until I'm ready to convert them to full issues. So maybe I'm having a conversation with some folks about, okay, we need to do this, this, and this, and create these user stories to get them done. And I'm just typing away, but I'm not ready to commit to converting them all to issues. I can quickly just type my, my notes number one, notes number two, and then I can go back and say, okay, I want to assign this to this person, and maybe I'll assign it to I might just have one collaborator in this repo and that. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, I think it's because it's a draft. So let me go ahead and bulk create these into an issue. Oh my goodness. Yep, live demos. <laughs> okay. I was just missing the button. There we go. Um, it's asking me which repository this is going to be related to, because as I said, you can create projects across multiple. And then now I can go ahead and assign that um, to the specific person. So I think the reason why it was only limiting me to the one was because it's like, okay, you're the one creating this issue. We're not sure which repo, repo this has to do with yet. Um, and then I want to assign this to this person. Let me see. Yeah, okay, I just needed to tab away. And then you've got that cool thing that you can do in Excel where you can just drag that option and assign multiple people at once. And it's just another one of those nice, quick, easy ways to update things at, all at the same time. Um, I can also look at my status board and here it's in the spreadsheet view, but I've got that ability to quickly switch it to the Kanban board and I can go back and forth. I can sort by specific things. I can create and customize it exactly how I want. 
Maybe I want to sort it by a specific metadata tag that I've created. So it's got that level of customization. And then I can look at that roadmap view that I talked about before. So I wanted to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh yeah, the one thing that I also wanted to point out on the Kanban board view is you can set a column limit. So say for example, you have the problem of scheduling too much work for a particular sprint and you wanna keep an eye on like how many user stories you might be doing. Um, you can set that limit and it'll alert you if you ever go over that so you have an idea of how much is going on at once. Um, there's lots more cool stuff to, to look at in that interface um, and I really love how you're able to just customize the solution to work well for yourself. Cool, let's hop over. I guess any quick questions before I go ahead and move on to the next topic? Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. That one is blocking the other one? Gotcha. So I'd say that you can do, you can do that organization with the task list and then it's just gonna group it underneath. In terms of how that might show up in the roadmap, you might just have to specify what the due date is for either of them. Yeah, I think so. Um, you are reminding me though, oh, wait. Oh yeah, I wanted to show the, the workflows. So you might be able to set up a workflow automation for that um, where you have on like issue change, you can probably create one that's like on issue change if I've added this to a task list that it's going to be set as like a date that's going to block the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could probably, yeah. The work, the workflow automations, I think are, like they're making updates to that over time. Um, and so we can probably expect to see some really powerful automations being able to build by the, by the basic building blocks that we have here. Um, the ones that are automatically turned on for you are gonna be one that sets your status to done when the item is closed. Um, and that usually happens on like your pull request has been merged and you can auto set that to close um, and the status for your pull request. So that's, that's gonna move that over in the Kanban for you. You don't have to go back to the issue and update that. Yeah. And for sake of the recording, sorry, I don't know if I mentioned, um, they were asking about being able to block certain items based off of what other items were doing. Okay, let's move back over. So I talked about GitHub issues and GitHub projects for a reason. Um, they're gonna show up a little bit in the IDE and this is where I get to talk about all my favorite stuff. The cool new integrations and improvements we made to make working with GitHub repos and just Git in general very easy in the IDE. Um, quick show of hands, is anybody using the built-in Git tooling in Visual Studio today? Okay, nice, awesome. Um, does anybody have like something that they like about it or a new feature that they've been using? Okay, I'm seeing some no's. That's totally fine. We can jump into the ones that I have on my list. Um, and first, just a little bit of background. Um, we like to separate Git activities into two buckets. The activities that you're doing while coding, that's gonna be your everyday fetching, syncing, pulling, adding, maybe I'm staging some particular items or stashing them, and then I can do my commit and my push. And then there's the focus work. So maybe you're like trying to figure out where a bug was introduced in the code, you have to do some like repo archeology span to go dig that up. Or maybe you're newer to a team and you're just trying to understand, okay, what is the relationship with this thing? When was this class made? And maybe I can kind of tease out and figure out what were some of the reasonings behind some of those decisions, as well as maybe cherry picking older commits or creating pull requests. When we think about those things that you're doing while you're coding, we talk a lot about the inner loop and I just hear this term thrown around a lot, so I'd like to give you my own definition. Um, it's that edit, build, and debug cycle that is keeping you in that focus flow while you're getting stuff done. Um, the 
other stuff that kind of surrounds that is going to be that production, analytics, issue reporting, code reviews, et cetera. And these are all important parts of the development cycle, and we call that the outer loop. So the things that are kind of peripheral to the code work that you're doing every day. Yeah, want to make sure that you got your picture. Cool. <laughs> um, the more that we can keep you in that inner loop in Visual Studio, the more productive you'll be. And it's not just me saying that. It's not just me saying that because I love VS. Um, our customers tell us this all the time, that any time that they need to leave Visual Studio for inner loop activities, it's going to slow them down. So we don't want to slow you down. We want to keep you fast and productive and efficient. Um, so we're trying to tighten that inner loop and keep you in Visual Studio while we can. And then GitHub kind of steps in and helps with those outer loop activities. And if you're using other solutions, they might not have all of those other things built in together. So it's nice to be able to have like one environment um, where you're doing that inner loop tasks and then one environment that you're doing those outer loop tasks. So this is just going to be all demo. So we'll go ahead and check this out. Um, I'm going to hop over to Visual Studio. And first, I'm going to show you an example of a project built from scratch, just to show you how to get started, how to light up all the Git tooling. And then I'll show you a project that's in progress, um, that same ShareX demo that has kind of a lot of code history, and we can see what it looks like um, if you were kind of transitioning your stuff over to GitHub, what it might look like. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and create a new project. And for the purposes of this example, I'll go ahead and create an ASP.NET web app. And we'll hope, oh, it's right over here. Awesome, because I was using that recently. Cool. So you can tell by the title how many times I've run through this demo. Um, and I'll go ahead and create that web app. So when you start um, creating a new project, there's no, there's not necessarily any um, Git tooling or anything lit up for you. You'll need to add that new project to source control. A lot of times you're probably like doing this by the clone flow, and if you do that, then the, the source control stuff will just pop up for you. So I'll go ahead and add this to source control from the status bar here, but I could just create a Git repo from that line as well. And we've got pop-ups coming up on my other screen. But this is what it looks like when you're creating a Git repository. It also works for Azure DevOps, as does um, almost everything that I'm showing today is going to work for both GitHub and Azure DevOps, um, unless I specifically uh, specify that's only GitHub. So I'll go ahead and create and push that. And you can see that it's doing the work of getting all of those changes ready. Um, if you're quick, you might be able to catch um, it has those outgoing commits, and so that had a number two up there, and then it pushed them, so it had zero outgoing commits. It's letting me know that my new GitHub uh, Git repository was created, and I can take a look at the Git repo window to view the contents. And when I talked about that, uh, that focus work that you're doing, and then the, the work that you're doing, uh, the Git tasks that you're doing while coding versus the focus work, the Git repository window is our solution for those focused activities, whereas the Git changes window over here on the right is going to be that stuff that you're doing on your day-to-day -day pushing, pulling, committing, et cetera. So let's go ahead and quickly uh, open this in the web just to see that we've made a new GitHub repo, and it is private right now. I'll go ahead and make that public um, when the presentation is over if people want to poke around. But back in Visual Studio, I want to quickly show how I can create a new branch. If I'm someone that is used to using the command line, um, I probably have all these commands memorized. Uh, I promise you will probably get to some operations that you don't have memorized and it, where it's really handy to have the UI with you. But if you're like me and you've been using the UI a lot, you probably forgot the command to create a new branch. It's pretty easy to do just from that window. I can do that from the branch picker. Um, create a new branch based on master. So I'll go ahead and create main and check that out. Um, that new branch dialog is available from my repo picker in, or from the branch picker in the status bar as well. And then I can also get there from my Git tools. 
Um, we've got it in all those places because it's whatever works best for your workflow. And it also allows us to have uh, great shortcut support. So if you're somebody that hates using your mouse, you can go look at my recent blog that talks about all the shortcuts um, and get used, used to using all of those shortcuts over time. Okay, so we've made one branch really easily from Visual Studio. We saw a bunch of other ways to create branches. Let's go ahead and go back to our uh, github.com and you can see if you're not sick of me creating new issues yet, I'll go ahead and create um, an issue. Let's say we're gonna update the homepage for the website. So I created that and I'm gonna go ahead and click this button down here in development. And what that's gonna do is automatically create a branch name for me based off of my issue name. And I can go ahead and check that out. It's giving me some options to do this from the command line, um, but I'll just go ahead and fetch from Visual Studio. using that kind of dotted down arrow key. And then I'll go ahead to my remotes and grab that and that's been checked out for me. So I'm ready to work on my branch now. Okay. I have my new branch. I have my task ahead of me. Um, and now I'm ready to make some changes in my code. So let's go ahead and open up that program page and Maybe this is the first time I'm using this template or the first time I've used it in a while. Maybe I've forgotten how to do some of these, um, some of these functions that are being applied for me by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and hover over and go and read that documentation that gets linked there. Um, and if you hadn't noticed, we've added this link here that says uh, GitHub examples and documentation. So this is a cool um, GitHub integration point that pulls in examples from open source repos on the web. And I can scroll through, and if I'm somebody that learns by example and wants to see how things are being applied elsewhere, I can go ahead and scroll through these. I can copy examples over and get a better, better understanding of how I might leverage that particular API um, and those functions better. I'll go ahead and close that. Maybe reviewing those documentation elements wasn't enough for me to kind of wrap my brain around what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that option and I'll ask Copilot, could you explain this step by step? And I got that quick output window for Copilot, but it's generating my chat over here on the right. And I've got my numbered step by step uh, explanation of what's been going on here. I, as we've probably heard a lot, AI uh, makes some surprises and mistakes, and you might not always get the same answer every time you put it in. But uh, I just wanted to point out that sometimes when I've asked it to explain the code step by step, I get that step by step explanation. And then I've also gotten like a little thing that was like, hey, you could improve the readability of this code by doing this. And I was like, whoa, that's so cool. I didn't even ask for that. Um, so I am ready to start making changes over here. Let's go ahead and put Git, GitHub Copilot to the work of actually updating my um, homepage. So I'll go ahead and open my index.cshtml. And I'm gonna use the shortcut this time, which is alt slash for Copilot. And I'll say, uh, can you update this page to be a welcome page? for the VS Live, maybe one word, VS Live conference. So Copilot's thinking, we'll see what it comes up with. So I see it's generated some code for me here. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. So it says, it's changed my title to Welcome to VS Live Conference. It's changed the display to say, Welcome to VS Live Conference. Join us to learn about the latest technologies and trends in software development. So it did a pretty good job of helping me generate some new information to put on my website. I've done versions of this demo where it's even given me a link to like the most recent VS Live Conference like website, which was like kind of crazy. I totally didn't expect it to do that. Um, but I am happy with these changes, so I'll go ahead 
and apply them there. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a mistake and we'll see how that might bite me later. So I've made some changes with GitHub Copilot. I've updated the web page, homepage that I set my issue to go do. And now I'm ready to review my changes and commit them. So let's double click on index.cs.html in my git changes window. And that's gonna pull up my diff view. And I can go ahead and adjust this diff view into a side by side mode if I like. It just depends on whatever I'm looking for. Um, and the thing about this page that I really like is that we've enabled uh, interactive line staging. So if this is something that you've done from the command line, it's a great way to like review all of your changes at once and make sure that you're committing what you mean to commit and make sure that you're discarding anything that you mean to discard. So I'm gonna go ahead and stage these changes. And I'm being especially careful, right? Because I use some AI to generate some work of mine and I wanna make sure that I actually wanna accept all those changes that the AI is, is proposing. So I've got a change there and I'll go ahead and fix that error that I made and go ahead and stage that line as well. So you've got that extra step where you're reviewing, you're making sure that you are staging everything that you mean to stage and I'll go ahead and make sure that that is all saved and ready to go. Um, the interactive line staging also works if you want to uh, remove stage lines, maybe you want to uh, maybe you accidentally stage something or maybe there's um, some feedback that you're getting on some work that you're doing in like a pair programming session and you need to get rid of some of those stage lines. All right, let me go ahead and reference that issue from my repo by using the hash. This is gonna look up all of the issues that are related to that repo, everything that was um, recent to me and I can go ahead and add that here uh, and that gets added to my related item section, which I can right click and open in the web. And I'll go ahead and commit and stage those items. So that was my brand new project. Let's go ahead and switch to another repo and see what it looks like in a repo that has more content in it. So I'll go to the ShareX demo and maybe this is you, maybe every day or every other day you have to switch between repos and you have to totally like clear your context and re-figure out where everything is and understand what the status is, what's going on with everybody else who's working on a particular repo. So if you didn't catch that, I used the uh, repo picker and the status bar to move over to my ShareX repo. And when I'm trying to get caught up on what everybody else is working on, I'm gonna go straight to my Git repository window and maybe I'll do a fetch just to make sure that everything is up to date but I'm gonna go ahead and use the multi-branch graph view, which allows me to select a bunch of branches and visualize all of those branches at the same time in the graph. So this is something that's very brand new to Visual Studio. We just released it in GA. Uh, it's actually coming in GA uh, for 17.7 um, in a couple weeks, <laughs> but it's in preview right now. So if you haven't checked it out, I totally would. Um, we are also gathering feedback to make sure that we didn't miss anything with this feature but I love how I can quickly scroll and put focus on the various parts of my branch. Um, and even if I add something that's super old, I can click on that and it'll scroll me down to where that bug fix is in relation to my other branches. And you got that great color coding. We've made the readability a little bit better. Um, so that helps me kind of get reacquainted with, okay, there's all these feature branches that are in progress right now and I've got a better idea of what's going on in my repository. Awesome. Another, another cool thing that you'd get just for free from having the multi-branch view is being able to um, compare commits across uh, different branches. So before you might have only been able to compare branch heads, but now if I control and select two different commits, I can go ahead and compare those commits across branches pretty easily um, and see what are the, all the files that changed, et cetera. All right. So I, I've reacquainted myself. I'm remembering what feature branch I'm on and what I've been working on. 
and I'm ready to go ahead and commit my latest changes. So let's go use that feature search again. It's gonna take a sec to think, um, and I can even tag pull requests um, because those are all treated the same numbering system in GitHub issues. You can probably see why I focused so much on GitHub issues before. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and commit these all and push. And Git is letting me know that I'm unable to push the remote repository because my local branch is behind. So I'll go ahead and pull and then push those options. And if that was me in the command line, I would get those, like a list of commands that I would need to run one, one right after the other to make sure that I'm in the right state. But I've got that help from the UI to make sure I'm doing the right operation. Let's make sure that I'm all set to go on my feature branch. And I've got the changes that I want in there, and I'm ready to create a pull request. So let's right click here, and that's one way to enter the pull request view. I can also get there from using the tool menu up top. And I get that, that nice in Visual Studio pull request creation process. So I can add my title, I can add my description, I can tag work items here as well. And when I create that item, it lets me know that it was successfully created and I can view that pull request in the browser. So we're constantly working on this, like we're working on the pull request experience right now. So if you really wanna see reviews happen in Visual Studio, I need to hear everybody, like I need everybody to go to developer community and engage on that ticket so that we have a lot of people that are asking for it. Um, it's on our roadmap and we'd love to keep working on it. Um, but the create pull request stuff is uh, coming to GA pretty soon as well. Um, and yeah, if we get a lot of people asking for that feature, we can try and create the whole uh, review experience as well, all in Visual Studio, because we know folks have been wanting that for a while. Okay, I covered a lot of stuff. And just for your benefit, I wanted to put it all on one screen. If anybody had something that they wanted to go um, check out later um, and let you know what are the preview features, that's gonna be the GitHub Copilot for Visual Studio, as well as creating a pull request. Um, the, yeah, I should have put it on multi-branch graph, but I was so excited. It's like, it's ready to be GA, it's just coming out in the next GA release, which is in a couple weeks. Okay. Make sure everybody got a chance to do their screenshot. Awesome. So here are my resources. Again, you don't need to um, take a screenshot of these now because I'll have a, a big link tree at the end where you can grab all of them. And I'm thinking about my time. I'm about 45 minutes in, which is good. We've got lots of time to keep talking. Um, I guess any questions about the integrated tooling before I hop over to GitHub Actions? Did anybody see anything they hadn't seen before with the Git, like the integration? Oh my gosh, everybody's already all the way up today. Okay, I got one person, <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, I wanted to finish this up by talking about GitHub Actions in Visual Studio um, because we've not only tried to make the inner loop work easier with um, the stuff that you're doing on a day-to-day, uh, but we've also added some GitHub Actions integrations that are in preview as well. So if you're not familiar, GitHub Actions is the continuous integration and continuous deployment solution from GitHub. It allows you to automate your build testing, et cetera. Um, a lot of teams have like one person that might manage these pipelines, but it's great to know the basics in case you ever need to make improvements on your current pipeline or get a simple one started for maybe a side project you're working on. So for whatever it is, our new Visual Studio integration for GitHub Actions in Azure makes it as easy to create a running pipeline for a new project as it is to do like right-click publish. And I know that's like, a lot of people are like, why would I ever do right-click publish anymore? But it, it is pretty easy. Um, is anybody using Actions today in their deployment already? Okay, new stuff, cool, okay. <laughs> um, 
if you're anything like me, making a new pipeline from scratch and getting it to work can be pretty intimidating. And what's awesome about the help that we've given you in Visual Studio is that it makes it very easy to do those steps. So let me quickly show what the GitHub Actions look like on the web end, and then I'll show you how to get started with the ones in VS. So what we're looking at here is, a, uh, is the screen that shows when you have a particular action already run. And I just wanted to show that they had two jobs running here, uh, a build and test loop for the Ubuntu platform and then one for the Windows platform. When I look at how jobs are being run, it's just like any CI CD um, solution where you can check on the items that were completed successfully or any items that were skipped. Um, and this is all controlled by the workflow file, uh, which is a YAML file, um, and that lives alongside of your code in your repo. So nothing, nothing crazy new um, here. Um, hopping over to the other one, if we take a look at the actions for the .NET podcast app, which is a like canonical demo app that a lot of Microsoft folks use, um, you might have, if you were watching any stuff at Build, you might have seen this being used a little bit. Um, they are using GitHub Actions to create deployment environments and update them and then delete deployment environments. And if you don't know what an Azure deployment environment is, that's totally fine. I'll chat about it in a little bit. But I just wanted to preview that Actions aren't, uh, aren't just for getting things up and running, but you can also like access a whole marketplace of actions. Um, I mentioned Dependabot earlier. You can get that running in your code base as a GitHub action. Um, you can get CodeQL running, and that's a code quality scanner. Um, that's really great for catching security vulnerabilities as well. Um, so GitHub Actions has a lot of benefits other than just getting your CI CD running. So you got my classic summary slide. You can create those new workflows. You can create jobs. Um, and those are the different things that are happening um, in your workflow. And they're going to be triggered on specific events. You can get it triggered on something like pushing your code to your repo or creating a pull request. And they are for build testing and deploying. So I saw a couple like furrowed brows, like how are we going to get a GitHub Actions pipeline working in a demo? Um, so hopefully everything works. But I'm going to go over to that new web application that I just created, which is Web App 5. And I am going to looking Solution Explorer. I already see that I have a little new node for GitHub Actions. And if I right click on that, I get the option to open in GitHub.com or create a new workflow. I'm going to go ahead and use a slightly different flow here, which is clicking on my project name, Web Application 5, and going to the Publish option. And this is going to start working me through a wizarding flow. So I'll go ahead and target Azure. And I'm going to create an Azure app service. This is just going to quickly um, host my uh, website on the web. And we love when monitors just like to size things for us. Let me get that so you can see what's going on here. Now it's a normal size window. Um, I've got my resource group has already been created, but if I hadn't created a resource group on Azure, um, I'm, not, I'm not an Azure admin. I don't go into Azure all the time and create resource groups, but it's very easy from the wizard to just go ahead and create a new one as long as you have your um, subscription information on there. Um, you can get your uh, web app up and running. So I already have one deployed. And I'll go ahead and select the option to do CI CD using a GitHub Actions workflow. And this is going to generate that YAML file for me. And it looks like everything worked, which is awesome. I'll go ahead and close that. And I've got this new screen that is giving me the status of my GitHub Action. And I can go to Git Changes and make sure that workflow is getting pushed to my GitHub repo. So, yep, it's even telling me that the next step would be to go ahead and push that. So I'll go and add my workflow. 
And that item was added into my .github slash workflows folder, which normally wouldn't be visible from my solution explorer because it's a hidden file. Um, but with the new GitHub Actions node that we've got going here, um, you can see all those workflow files from Visual Studio and, add, and edit them, which is pretty cool. Um, this is also a preview feature. So to enable it, you'll need to go to uh, your feature. You can go to Tools Options Preview Features, or if you're like me and you're lazy, um, you can go type in GitHub Actions. And it's going to be this one that, uh, do, do, do. wow, we've got a lot of GitHub stuff going on, so maybe that's not the best way. Let me just take the long way. I'll go Tools, Options, and go to Preview Features. Oh, and I'm on an older version as well, so it's not going to show up. But I promise you there will be an option that allows you to create a, uh, to add your GitHub Actions to your Solution Explorer, as you can see on mine over here. Let me go ahead and commit that flow. I'll go ahead and push it to my remote. And I also have that one quick way of getting to the browser um, from my three dots here, uh, or I can go to it from my GitHub Actions. So if I open that in GitHub, it's uh, taking me over to my browser page. I can look at my actions, and it's adding my new workflow. And my new workflow is actually running right now. Um, and we can see what a completed flow looks like. And we can hop back as well. Uh, oh, this is the same one. Web application one. I can go back to my other actions flow. And we can look at what that looks like when it's completed. It builds and deploys. Um, and depending on how long this takes, I might be able to show you how it's hosted that web app already for me. And I had to do like four steps and didn't have to write any YAML, which was awesome. Cool. So we are getting close on time. Um, I want to make sure that I'm covering the last couple slides here, but as promised, I'll have the last 15 minutes for questions if people have them. I teased at Azure deployment environments, and you've probably, if you've heard news about DevBox, you've probably heard a little bit about what Azure deployment environments are. Um, they're going to be this new solution that allows you to group all the resources that you might need to deploy a new app um, into a templated uh, project and that um, your admin can set those up with different security levels and get you running with these environments that allow you to build and test super easily. So you have your dev infra team on one side and they're controlling what are those actual, like what are all the pieces that you might need to get your app up and running. And then you have the developers that don't want to have to deal with all of that, but they just want to be able to get those pipelines up and running. Um, and it might be a little bit broad, hard for me to totally make that make sense. Um, so if you're following along, um, I have a video that shows and demonstrates that. Um, the slides are going to be shared out on the web page. But this is the, the video from Build um, that has a really great view. What I can show instead, because we don't have time for the video, is going back to that .NET podcast app. When it creates a new development or a new deployment environment, it does that on pull request. And if I take a look at a pull request that has one of those on there, you can see that there, let's actually make sure that we have one. Do. So um, it'll create these new environments for you. So this is a side effect of the GitHub Actions pipeline. And um, these are like test container apps that you might use to actually debug your app that you're currently working on in a new web environment. So you've got all of the pieces in place. You can take a look at the um, interface and make sure everything is working the way that you expected. You can also explore the API in a live format. 
but you don't have to deploy it all, and you didn't have to do the work of setting up that deployment. Um, it was just set up in a nice little package for you, and um, you can get that to deploy on your actions. So I will not be walking through how to do that today, but it'll be in the resources um, how to get those running as well. And it's gonna try and play my video, so I'll just skip best. These are the specific resources that I'll be talking about there. I've been talking about that resource page a lot, so I'll go ahead and skip to that really quick. If you guys wanna grab all of the links um, that I talk about in my slides, um, it has links to all of the repositories as well if you wanna take a look at those. And it also has my contact info um, if you want to reach out to me on like LinkedIn or Twitter, whatever, whatever you're working on. I can also write my email on the board over here. Um, and that'll allow you to let me know if you had any questions that I couldn't answer today and follow up. So I'll let folks grab those. These, will, these are in the public slides that'll be shared on the conference webpage. And then if, did every, sorry, did everybody get the, the resource page that they needed? Okay, I got thumbs up, awesome. Then, I have a couple questions and um, a poll everywhere, and this is just to, if we wanted to, like, if there weren't any questions, I could fill the time. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Um, but the poll everywhere is an interactive platform that'll ask you some questions and we can look at what the group responses are. If you're too lazy to pull out your phone and you wanna see what other people are seeing, uh, it'll be a page that's just asking you, what, what did you see that is something that you're excited about trying? And then I've got, I'll, I can share the responses live if people are, are adding some. So I've got some here. I would like to use these GitHub features with a repo hosted on AWS. Um, people are excited about GitHub Actions. So I don't have all the answers about using GitHub features with uh, repos hosted elsewhere, but I do know of some organizations that will have um, GitHub to be their, their storage solution, but then they're deploying uh, in another place. Maybe they're deploying on like an AWS infrastructure or something else, and um, they're able to connect things up in that direction, so I would assume that you'd be able to connect things up the other way. Uh, and I think what a lot of folks will do is have kind of like a mirror repo in one of the platforms that is like all of the code gets transported over to the other platform for deployment. So I think there are some flexible solutions for what people are looking for. Yep, I'm getting more GitHub actions. Super cool. Thanks for participating. Um, Yeah, um, I didn't demo any of the merge conflict resolution today in Visual Studio, but we do consistently get a lot of positive feedback about it. So I'm really glad that we were able to deliver a solution that works for folks there. Cool. And then I can ask another question. <laughs> here, which is where I don't often get a bunch of devs in a room that I get to talk to. I normally talk to folks one on one when they reply to me on like the de de um, developer community. So if anybody has any GitHub integrations that you didn't see and that you would like to see, this is your opportunity to give me some anonymous feedback that I can take back to my team. So yeah, in, um, so the question was, can you review pull requests in Visual Studio with all of the 
integration with the comments. Um, and that's not something that we have in VS today. It is something that is on our roadmap and we are hoping to like continue work on and implement for you all. Um, but it's going to be a, like, to build that from scratch where it's gonna take some time and we'll need a lot of folks to engage with us and help us like user test and make sure that it's ready uh, to get out. So yeah, today the, um, you can only create pull requests in Visual Studio. People are looking forward to Copilot. Um, someone was asking, can you initialize a repository in GitHub via Visual Studio? And yeah, so I showed that in the demo earlier. If I go ahead, if you've got any new projects that you're working on, say I'm creating a quick console application. The action of um, clicking on create git repository or add to source control are gonna have the same effect. And that allows you to uh, create a git repository. So this is analogous to doing git init in the CLI. Um, and this is gonna initialize that repo for you. It's going to push it up to GitHub as well. Um, and you can select if you're working on Azure DevOps to do that. So the question was, does the GitHub workflow needed to, need to be included in the Git ignore, or is it like automatically included? Um, the GitHub, so where workflows live in your Git repository, I think there are, they're gonna be tracked by source control. Um, so I think in most cases, you probably want your actions to be um, tracked, but if you have, for some reason, had um, like local actions that you didn't want to like anybody else uh, like maybe it depended on your machine's configuration. Um, <clears throat> you might want to add an entry to your Git ignore. And like I mentioned, a lot of the GitHub files uh, for, for your solutions in Visual Studio are gonna be hidden files. Um, but we actually implemented a pretty easy way to add items to your Git ignore um, from the, uh, file window. So say for example, I had some something in this file that I didn't want um, to be tracked by source control. Let me, I'll go ahead and right click on that and I can go to the Git tab. And if I click ignore and untrack that item, what it's gonna do is it's going to say that I'm no longer tracking that item and it's gonna update the Git ignore for me to include that file so I don't have to manually go update my Git ignore on my own. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, someone's asking to show the merge conflict view again. I had a demo on here that had some merges. So let's see if I can remember which one it was. I'll go ahead. Let's do, do this one, no, this is a multi-repo. Yeah, unfortunately I don't have one that's set up to show the conflict resolution. Um, what someone might have been asking about is um, when you've got differences coming in from two sides or maybe you've made some edits to a file. Let's say I added a bunch of lines here. Um, that's accessible, like I can see the difference between, um, and I'll switch to a side by side so it's easier to see. I can see the differences between my working tree and the latest commit on that branch. So that's what's being shown in this view the merge conflict resolution for Visual Studio is gonna allow you to do that like, like three way merge type thing where you can see like the incoming, you can see your current changes and then you can see what's, what the result is going to be. Um, and if there is like multiple 
sources for a single target branch, um, I think it'll it'll show both of those in the in the same side view. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'll go ahead and um, stop sharing now. But if folks still have their poll everywhere, I'll add. Um, I'll make the last item active, which is just some presenter feedback. Um, you all can let me know how I did, um, and I'll go ahead and write my uh, Microsoft email on the board if anybody wants to stay in contact. Thank you all. <laughs>